Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Dreaded the Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode 19 of my Indiana Pacers My League on NBA 2K15. We're taking on the Charlotte Hornets in the conference final, simulating up to the first elimination game. We take a 2-1 series lead. That turns into a 3-1 series lead. And once again, we're going to be playing a closeout game with a chance to advance to the next round. This time, we would be advancing to the NBA Finals. Take a look at the Charlotte Hornets team stats right here. They only have three guys who average double-digit figures, but I also realized they had five guys in between eight points and ten points a game. That makes me think they have pretty good depth, but one of those guys, Michael Kidd-Gilchrist, will be missing the series. He broke his leg and he will be out for the rest of the playoffs. So, Anyway, take a look at how we are doing throughout the playoffs so far. These are our playoff stats. You can see Emmanuel Moutier is the big jumper. He's up to 15 points a game now. And uh, Paul Millsap struggling a little bit. Moutier trying to make up for that. Millsap obviously with that bruise tip for a little while. But he's looking good. And he's actually going to have a really good game today that you will see. So anyway, the Hornets finished the year 54-28. and 28. That was four games better than us. They ended up as the three seed. We were the four seed. We're going to try and become the first four seed to make the NBA Finals since the 2010 Boston Celtics when they made it out of a four spot in the Easter Conference before losing to the Los Angeles Lakers in seven games that year. But here we go, getting the game started in Charlotte. Game five, Paul George tries to go behind the back. Jordan to Millsap, and Millsap's looking healthy. They're flying through the air for the reverse layup. We have an early four-zip lead. Gerald Henderson pulling up, though. He will not knock that down, but Cody Zeller's there on the offensive rebound, and he actually gets the putback and one, so... Now it's a 6-3 game, rebounded by Paul Millsap, his day's off to a nice start already, Butler with the ball dribbling up the court through the pressure in the fast break, and he actually gets the contact layup, didn't think that was going, looked like a little bit of a weird shot, but here we are, Paul George now, once again running the break, and that's something we've done a lot more effectively in the second half of the season, is get out and run the break. I've talked about it before, we're not a great offensively talented team, we have a lot of, I mean, if your best offensive player is probably Paul George, you're probably not the best offensive team in basketball, because Paul George is a good offensive player, but he's certainly not a great one, so certainly it helps to run the fast break when we can, but Paul Millsap knocks down the mid-range right there, we're up by 6, now it's a 4 point lead, 16-12, Jimmy Butler, again running the break to Paul George who misses the dunk, it'll be uh, battled around a little bit, and eventually rebounded by Kemba Walker, who's going to bring it up now to Lance Stevenson, Stevenson to the hoop, and one layup, and yes, this is the Lance Stevenson revenge series of sorts, he's going up against his old team in the Indiana Pacers, we've obviously moved on from him, and we've recovered pretty well, considering that we're back in the conference finals without him, but... He has helped the Charlotte team get to the conference finals. That's a team that I thought was going to be pretty good in real life this year. They've played a really hard schedule. A lot of Western Conference teams out the gate. They've won four in a row now after last night's victory. And I think they could turn it around. I think they're sort of lurking. It could try to make a run at an eighth seed eventually because it's still pretty, I mean, you know, where they're 30 games in or so. So, I mean, it's still relatively early. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely been a disappointing start for a team that I really thought was going to be like a top four seed in the East this year. Anyway, here's KJ McDaniels with the steal. McDaniels is going to take this all by himself to the hoop, one-handed slam. And now it's 32-22 to at the start of the second quarter. Kemba Walker with the ball being covered by Tyler Ennis. But this is when Kemba Walker's at his best, creating shots for himself. And Tyler Ennis just had no business trying to cover him right there. Here's Kelly Oubre, though, getting a screen from Anthony Tolliver. Oubre, sweet bounce pass to Tolliver. Didn't think uh, that was going to get through there. Oubre, not the best passer in the world, but he gets that done. And then Tolliver knocks down the jumper. Here's a rebound by Kali Stein out to Oubre. Oubre, I tried to lob that up to KJ McDaniels, but instead Oubre goes off the glass to himself and slams it down with a windmill. Check out the replay. Kelly Oubre doing it all right now. I guess that wasn't really a windmill. He just cocked it back a little bit. But 36-28 now. Here is PJ Hairston, their former first-round pick with the ball giving it out to Gerald Henderson behind the line he knocks it down and the lead is down to five the Hornets are hanging around we had a bit of a lead there at the end of the first quarter but they're coming back right now it's a five-point game here's Frank Kaminsky in the post out to Kemba Walker for three and Walker knocks that down he's not the greatest three-point shooter in the world and I was pretty surprised he hit that when uh, he was so covered but sweet pass to Kaminsky and just like that it's a two-point game 41-39 now here we go with Kemba Walker Tries to get that one out to P.J. Harrison. It's tipped. Eventually, Harrison comes up with a great pass down low to Kaminsky. Hook shot. Yes, it's good. And the game is tied. The Hornets have come all the way back. It's essentially like a 21-9 run right now, I think, or something like that. Or 22-20-9, I think. Something around those 
20, I don't know. But anyway, the Hornets actually take the lead now, 45 to 30, 45 to 43. And then here we're going to freeze frame it. So Henderson has to help down on uh, DeAndre Jordan to let Biombo help middle on the screen and roll. That leaves our man Paul George wide open for three. And that's going to be an easy knockdown for Paul George. So 50-37 right now. This is going to be rebounded by KJ McDaniels. Up the court to Oubre, who's got a lane to the basket. He makes it with one hand. Now it's 52-49, to and that would be the score heading into the half. So a pretty good first half of basketball from us up by three. We didn't play great on offense or defense. We played pretty solid both ways, and you can see we're shooting 55%. We do have some turnovers, and we're out rebounding them, which is good. But, yeah, we have turned the ball over a little bit too much. We probably could have opened up a bigger league considering we're shooting 55%. They're shooting 42%. But Millsap with seven rebounds at the half. He's had a fantastic first half. Kemba Walker, though, dishing out nine, six assists already. Moody is going to miss that easy layup. Now Lance Stevenson on the rebound. He's going to give it up to Gerald Henderson on the break. Henderson stops, pops, and knocks down that mid-range jumper from the baseline. Three-point game once again. 56-53, Lance Stevenson now once again with the ball, directing traffic for this Charlotte Hornets offense. Henderson again from the baseline, and again he knocks it down, and it's a one-point game. 56-55, Butler with the ball on the perimeter now. He's going to try and drive in. He finds a wide-open Emmanuel Moody, though. His man was hanging out in the paint for some reason that's an easy three for Emmanuel Moutier now four point game Stevenson down low to Zeller and DeAndre just or Paul Millsap actually got caught I don't know what he was doing there but Zeller got wide open and that's unfortunate but we're gonna go quickly here out of the inbound two point game Moutier with the ball is gonna look for a quick screen from Paul Millsap just eight seconds run off the shot clock already but we're gonna keep going and Millsap two-handed slam on what three Charlotte Hornets right there including Bismack Biombo. Anyway, Moutier with the screen, or Moutier looking for the screen again. It's Millsap for three, and he knocks it down again. Paul Millsap is on fire in the third quarter is where he took over this ball game. Going right back to Millsap in the post. This time, Zeller doesn't step up. Hand down, man down. Millsap knocks down that jumper. Now it's a five-point lead. We're going right back to him again. This time, Zeller does step up. So Miller's going to get him in the post, go right around him, try the one-handed layup. It's no good, but he gets his own rebound and slams the put back with one hand. Now, once again, a five-point game, 68-63. And here comes Frank Kaminsky for the Charlotte Hornets again, taking Cauley Stein off the dribble. That is unacceptable defense by Willie Cauley Stein. You can't let a guy like Kaminsky take you off the dribble like that. But he gets the rebound now up to Jimmy Butler. Butler is going to look for the lob to Kelly Oubre, and it's a 10-point lead. Here we go on a bit of a run right now, 79-68. That dunk is no good from Oubre, but Cauley Stein out to McDaniels to Tyler Ennis, and Ennis knocks down the jumper. We have a 13-point lead. Now start of the fourth quarter, it's a 14-point lead. Rebounded by the big man out of Arizona whose name I cannot pronounce. It's Caleb something. Caleb Tarkowski or Tarshuski or something, but... Anyway, that would be an easy floater for P.J. Harrison now. It is a 12-point game. K.J. McDaniels with the ball. And this is where we would go on our run up by 12. George is going to make it 15. Now George again with the ball looking for the screen from Cauley Stein. He's going to go on a pick and roll, but he finds Moody in the corner for three. That is no good, but Cauley Stein on the rebound and the putback. That's good. Now it's a 17-point lead. Here comes Butler now on the break. He's going to hold up a little bit, wait for the screen from DeAndre, go around it, open lane, that's good. That makes it a 21-point lead. Now it's a 23-point lead, a 11 or an 11-0 run right now for the Pacers. George with the ball, through the defense, left-handed layup. Now make it a 25-point lead and a big 15-0 run right there, or a 13-0 run for the Pacers. That finally gets stopped when Biombo does a little post move, but by now we've got our bench, and he did that on Patrick Young. Here's Patrick Young to Paul George in the corner for the three. He knocks it down back up by 26 right now. 100, 274. You can take a look at the run in the bottom of the screen. Kemba Walker with the ball. Now Donald Sloan in getting some playing time. We have Francisco Garcia in, as well as Patrick Young, the three guys that are not in our rotation but are active for each of these playoff games. 104-85, it's a 19-point game with 245 to play. Cody Zeller down low. He actually gets that and one chance to cut the lead down to 16 as the Hornets trying as hard as they can to save their season with one last run. Stevenson to Kemba. Kemba with the ball. 42 seconds to play. That'll be good. So the lead's down to 12 over 40 seconds. It is pretty much too little too late. And you can see here under 30 seconds to play now a little pick and roll to Cauley Stein. Stein to McDaniels. McDaniels is going to make the extra pass to Garcia. And Garcia, when he comes in, he's shooting because he has not played very much this season. But with two seconds left, the Indiana Pacers win in 107-92. And they're going back to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2000 when they took on the Los Angeles Lakers. And I want to say lost in like five games, but I don't quite remember the exacts. Of course, that team had the likes of Reggie Miller on it, Jalen Rose, Austin Crozier, Jonathan Bender, 
and many more. This team, a whole lot different, but might be just as good as they're headed back to the finals out of the four spot. Like I said, the first team to do that since the Boston Celtics in 2010. And you can take a look at the guys who just came off the court, not even looking that excited, but... Anyway, we did have 12 turnovers this game. That's the only down thing. I that's the only downside of this game. That or the the only negative I could find. Our defense played pretty well at the end of the day, holding them to 44% shooting, and we shot over 50%. Paul Millsap 27 and 12, two steals, three assists. He was certainly the player of the game. Although Paul George had a great fourth quarter, and he really helped our offense out during the fourth quarter. I thought he carried us a little bit there. Anyway. Gerald Henderson, 20 points on 22 shots. Walker had 13 points on, what is that, 20 shots. So a couple inefficient days for some of their better scores. And that's pretty much going to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. And those out. Peace.